this map took me nearly a month to draw with the help from your guys' comments. The land of Calsoros is in the far north, east of the frozen wastes of Further, and south of the Goblin Lands. Dark whispers and golden tales veil the land in mystery with a deep, deep history. And this is its story. Beauty was once non-existent past the last settlements of man, south of the line of darkness that ran from the Fey Grotto to the Mermaid Cove, and none dared to enter into the plain. Goblins were the tyrants of the darkness, ruled over by their demonic leaders they called gods. Those who lived in the last settlements of man in the north lived in terror, constantly on the lookout for goblin raids or worse. Only eight were situated north of the border, inhabited by farmers and hunters who couldn't afford to live in the luxurious cities of the south, or had been shunned by the rest of society. Northerner had become a byword, a social status even, held lower than the lowest peasants of the civilized world. When the raids came, no one came to help them. One by one the settlements disappeared, few survivors limping to the next settlement only to die before they could spew the horrors they saw. Darkness was coming south. Poor Eteris was a thief before, well known throughout the cities as the greatest thief in the kingdom. He had never been seen before, and he had stolen treasures beyond imaginable price. His life was romanticized. Then he was caught, flogged, and thrown into the arena to fight a lion with his bare hands. Yet, whatever the officials threw at him, Kor stood defiant. Eteris the Deathless, they called him. Hated everywhere, Kor was eventually banished to the northern settlements. The citizens of Branta, the last standing settlement of the north, watched as their fellow settlements got gobbled up one by one. It was soon their turn to watch the hordes come and to try and escape with their lives. Kor and his neighbors watched the smoke rise high on the red sky as the sun rose. The time was ticking closer and closer. Why not leave now, while we still have our lives, some asked. But they knew why. Bitterness thrived in the minds of the northerners with their treatment from the south, and would not go begging at the doorstep just to be turned down. Let's march to meet them, said Kor, fed up. The village elders shook their heads sadly. No use, they said. We are too weak. We would not last a minute. Kor stormed away, knife clutched in one hand and a log in his other. He waited, and waited for the goblins to rear their ugly faces. Kor would stand alone in his battle against the horde. We want to help, said a voice from behind Kor. He looked, and there stood thirty men and women his age and younger. Their leader held out a sheathed sword to Kor. You'll die, you know, he said, taking the weapon. Only a shrug answered. Kor nodded his approval, and continued his wait. If you want the epic map of Calsolros, be sure to check it out before it leaves my shop forever. It's the first link in the description. A new feeling filled Kors and his teammates' hearts as they stared at the bloodied ground. Comrades and goblins alike lay dead in the grass, only seven of the ragtag warriors surviving. Counting the goblin horde, Kor realized just how strong the evil creatures were. Only eight were lying in the grass. They'll just come back, said one of his comrades shakily. I say we run for the hills while we can, said another. But a new thought was forming in Kor's mind. He could, no, would not, sit idly by any longer as the goblins took what he had, which was very little. He decided then and there that he would hunt down every last goblin until his home was safe. I will fight, he said with a grim voice. I will fight to my last. All but one of the ragtag warriors followed Kor in his dream, and that hope brought more of the villagers as well. Kor was satisfied with his 30 troops, but knew they would not be able to fend off the goblins if they were attacked again. The young leader tried convincing the village elders of a nomadic lifestyle, but they would not budge. So, alone, Kor led his weak but bold warriors into the wilderness, never to see Branta again. Kor's ragtags, as they soon began to call themselves, were anything but soldiers, but were absolutely determined to become the fiercest. The North had taught the ragtags resilience and steadfastness, so the small team trained hard and long every day to become the best, 
Occasionally, they would ambush a traveling goblin and force it to fight one of them, and they sharpened their skills quickly. Months passed and the ragtag still trained, moving among the border settlements of the kingdom, trading their skills for food and training from station soldiers. The ragtags grew in size as well, peasants tired of the harsh taxes giving up their lives in the kingdom to join the small army. Even seasoned soldiers joined their ranks. Soon the ragtags became synonymous with the northern legion, and even the king began to get worried. But Kor didn't have his sights set on the kingdom. Just two years after their first encounter with the goblins, Kor began mobilizing the ragtags north, far from the borderlands. They moved quickly over the goblin villages and towns, raiding and pillaging the once raiders and pillagers. Kor and his ragtags followed the Lydra Canyons northeast, fighting and resting as they went. Soon the word had spread over the goblin lands that an army of man had ventured into the north and was devastating the goblin hordes. From his fortress in Ushakrad, the goblin king ordered his armies to organize and march to meet the army of Kor at the Sol Basin. And meet they did. The clash was incredible, a shield wall hundreds of yards long and columns hundreds deep. The battle lasted three long tiring days when Kor met the goblin lieutenant Jarash in battle, slaying him and his guard. Terrified, the goblins began to flee, retreating to their reinforcements in Ushakar. Kor and the ragtags pursued relentlessly, following the horde into the gates of the evil smelling city before they had a chance to close. There, chaos ensued. The long-tormented humans spewed their rage fully on the goblin citizens, crashing down the doors of the homes. The ragtags knew no end. Kor, extremely confident with his battle, organized his elite warriors and made his way to the fortress of the Goblin King. The building was dark and gloomy, endless hallways leading to nothing, and lined with blue flames. Snarling faces were carved in the stones and giant, spiked chandeliers hung from the ever-growing ceiling. Endless guards met the elite ragtags, but once they had defeated the horde, the Goblin King, their god, was nowhere to be seen. The elites searched the fortress high and low, but found nothing but more goblins. Kor gazed out from the king's balcony the next day, goblins in chains and man the reigning force in Ushakrag. Small battles still raged throughout the city, and Kor knew most of the goblins would have to be purged, but to him and his ragtags, their filthy tormentors were less than dirt. It was a new day in the north. It was the beginning of a new reign. The termination of the darkness in the northern realms was slow and sometimes would come to a standstill. But Kor saw that every goblin in every crevice was either dead or fleeing further north. To commemorate his victory, Kor began reconstructing the goblin plains by planting a titan tree. It was eventually named Koraboros, the titan of the arborous forest. Small settlements and cities began popping up around the plain, and greenery began to retake the darkness. The forest of Arborus grew larger and larger, and other races began to migrate into Kor's new kingdom. It was far from the Cal Solros we know today, and many wars and supernatural disasters would strike the lands, but it was a new age in the north. <laughs>